I, I want to talk about another Bulwark favorite. Um, he, he actually tweeted one of our articles recently, and so I was, I was hoping that maybe this person would have, uh, you know, might, might do some learning had he had he explored some of the other other material on the site. Um, and uh, and that is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And um, I, I just I was so impressed. I guess maybe as somebody that has a lot of regrets in life, you know, yeah. I, I feel like I now have, like, I feel like I now in commute in, in community with other people who have been like, you know, I missed that one and like take responsibility, moved on. You wrote a, a, a piece about the vaccine autism link based on RFK Jr.'s claims way back in the day uh, with 2005. Salon. Yeah, with well, Salon, I guess, um, which was retracted yeah. to what eighteen years ago now. Um, the campaign now his campaign's back up. You know, he's repeating a lot of these claims. He's you know he attacks you Salon and and so and, and so you wrote about this recently. Just so give folks who like kind of missed this a backstory. Cause I think it was pretty. You could have just sort of ducked and and pretended like this wasn't happening, but you you wrote about it and took it head on, which I appreciated. Yeah, I mean, I had just taken over as editor in chief of Salon. I was the first editor in chief after our founder stepped away, David Talbot. Great guy, good friend, very, very, very conspiracy theory minded. That's not an insult. That's a description. Did he, he would, write. He would, did he write Season of the Witch? He did, and mm-hmm. that's a great book. It's so good. That's so it's good. So it's about good. The history of San oh Francisco. my god! It's, so, it's unbelievably but, good. But then he went on to just a lot of Kennedy conspiracy theories. He believes that both yeah. Bobby and Jack were killed by. I don't know the CIA somehow. Maybe Alan yeah. Dulles, pers- not personally, he never says that. I don't. I don't want to insult anybody. I just want to stick to the truths. Got it. Um, okay. And so I inherited this partnership with Rolling Stone, which ne- once I took over was not easy because they were all. They also wanted people to believe that John Kerry won Ohio and therefore he was the president. And I had a, well, I assigned somebody with Jan's money to look into it, and he the D bold machines. The, the Diebold, exactly. Yeah. Um, and he found that that had not occurred. Uh, yeah. And Jan wasn't happy with me. So then came, along came the Bobby autism piece. And it, he made the claim and it, he had, you know, he claimed that the CDC had falsified and taken down and switched and da, da, da. This whole study suppressed a study that showed the link between vaccines and particularly the Time, uh Now I've gone too far. Once you say thimerosal, you've gone too far. No, no, but anyway, no, this is this is interesting. That you know, the CDC had basically suppressed this information, this research that it had done, and that he, it knew that there was a link between vaccines and autism, childhood, mainly uh, measles, mumps, and rubella vaccines, and uh, suppressed it. And you know, big pharma was behind it. Blah 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 blah. Um, our partnership with Rolling Stone included me doing all the heavy lifting of editing, but they were going to do the fact checking, and that that was important, right? You know, and they, right. you know, they at the time and probably still do have a really robust fact checking department. When they assign a real feature, I mean, it's fallen short in a few other cases, but anyway, um, the story goes. I mean, you know, part of what I said that was, you know, really the the mea culpa part. I had misgivings, and I just didn't really push hard enough. I knew that my Jan was on my board. I had just taken over. David Talbot was on my board. Um, you know, I, I liked my job and I wanted to keep it. Right. And uh, and we had great fact checking. So, you know, everything was good, except it wasn't. Like from the minute it went up on the web, we started getting irate and also erudite um, letters explaining what we got wrong. And it just went on and on and on. And we kept appending corrections and corrections. And then um, Seth Mnookin wrote a book that dealt with this. And he did the research to show that, I don't know if Bobby did this intentionally or stupidly. He had cut and pasted from, he had a transcript of a meeting, a CDC-sponsored meeting, where they discussed this research. And he had cut and pasted kind of the wor- one of the worst sins of journalism because we've all been tempted. It's like, this is a really good quote if I just chopped off the part where he the says- The first I don't three actually- words. Yeah, or, or, yeah, the first three words. Um, and he had done that and he had chopped it up and he had put things in different orders and made it sound like these people were all in on this big pharma cover up. They were not. And when we saw that, it was so, it was humiliating, but it, we took it down. Now there's still an argument about you know, whether you should take things down or just leave them up and put, you know, big caution tape or something. Yeah. Uh, we did take it down because it was sort of like so bad you couldn't correct it. And right. anyway, um, 
honestly, what really provoked me was not that I'm a good person, which I, I'm a wonderful person, but Bobby started saying that Big Pharma got to me. Like, okay, I have a nice little apartment. Big Pharma. No, never. Didn't try. You know? You're not on the Pfizer payroll, Moderna? Not, Just, no, Moderna's not I mean, throwing a little cash in your, your way? You know? I'm, I can't retire. Uh, this podcast so is was, still looking for sponsors if Moderna is out there. Um, Moderna, you know, Pfizer, you know, J&J, you know, bring it on. We, we did take it down, guys. No, I'm totally joking. But I mean, that just pissed me off so royally. This scion, I mean, the poor man suffered major trauma. And I always say that when I'm asked about him. He- Bobby Jr., you mean. Crazy Bobby Jr., but yeah. we might be too if we lived through what he lived through. But anyway, he's going around now in real time saying that Big Pharma got to me. And I was just like, no, the truth got to me. Conscience got to me, Bobby. And I'm just not, I'm not here for that. So, you know, I guess in some ways I was defending my own honor, not really necessarily doing a mea culpa. But as you know, it was a mea culpa. I mean, you, you, yeah. you know, you did it. Your book was great. And it's just like, you got to do it sometimes. It's like, here yeah. are the reasons. And it's just, I, I mean, it's not, it's not an apples to apples comparison, but the similarities is like the things that I feel the most bad about is I look back at like, and I, I wrote this, I was like, I, it was with Palin I knew. Right. It was with Palin. Right. I knew I was like, I know something is wrong with this. It smells bad. I still like John McCain. I still respect him. I still, you know, there are other rational. I still have my career. I still have other opportunities. But like, you know, it's when it's when you're like, man, I smelled it. But I just kind of ignored the smell for various right. reasons. Like, that's the part that I think is. I, I think a lot of people experience that. I think that's important to speak it out loud because it's more for like that is a good learning for the next people. Like when something it, smells it really bad, it probably is bad. It really is. I mean, and I say this in the piece, part of my, you know, self-justification was everybody was super busy at Salon. I mean, we were always overworked. I mean, sure. the the 2000 election, Florida recount, and then 9-11 turned us from a sleepy little web publication that published maybe once a day to a 24-7 publishing operation with the same number of people. So it yeah. was really, really, always really hard and really fun. It was great. But I, I told myself, I, you know, I, I'm the editor in chief. First of all, the buck stops with me. But also, I'm a good editor if I, you know, really use my brain and I can do it. And I don't want to dump this on my news editor who's, you know, drowning or my features editor. Likewise, he's doing 10 things at once. So I, that's another way, you know, in terms of if people are wrestling with these kinds of issues where you're just like, I just need to spare these other people yeah, right. the burden. When you really, there's a, a part of you that's like, if I said, if I show this to these other people, I won't mention their names, but they're like, they're just the greatest people in the world. And they're so smart and they have so much integrity. If I, they were both so mortified on my behalf and also theirs because it was, you know, really a bad look for salon. They would have found it. They would have come to me. We would have killed it. If, if I had simply done that and not said, I'm just, you know, protecting them so that it's it, you you're you really your conscience your mind your psyche does really weird things when you're yeah. you know trying to justify doing the wrong thing did you know bobby at all kennedy you know i have never you, met him you're so, I, talked I, to him. I talked to him a million times probably literally a million he would call me at all hours of the day and night um and he was charming and you know i'm irish catholic if you don't know I, the, I worship the Kennedys. I mean, you know, as a child, my family, you know, it, it, so it was like my father was gone, but it would have been a really big deal for me to be like editing Bobby's son. You know, right, you have yeah. those milestones in your life that are like they're sure. personal to you. Um, he was charming. He was funny. He had stories. We talked about his family. And then over time, he became really bullying. And then when we took the piece down, oh, my God. Um, you know, he wrote like a 13 page, whatever rejoinder where he shared some of my editing notes and then lied about some other things, but that's par for the course we've learned. Um, so yeah, but I never, I never did get to meet him or Cheryl Hines who, you know, I love. What, yeah, Sam, what do you think about his, can like the, I, I'm, I'm curious your view both a on like kind of the rationalization of his campaign now, like what do you think he thinks he's getting out of it? And also really even I'm more curious about what you think about, you know, there's the horseshoe element. Like, you yeah. must have people in your life, right? I assume since you, like, are of this world who are, like, kind of far lefty, progressive hippie folks that that are that have kind of jumped on this bandwagon of, that's kind of like this sort of Trumpy leftism that, right. that RFK well, I mean, represents. I, my, my beloved friend David Talbot has, you know, and yeah. he's, he's all over Facebook with it. And, you know, I just, I just 
do my best not to comment and just wish him a happy birthday or whatever. What's um, underneath all that? Like people do, like it's an interesting species, the lefty horseshoe jumper, right? Like people who don't understand this concept, it's like the, the instead of a straight line, our politics is a horseshoe. And so there's the middle on one side who's like the bulwark centrist kind of middle. But then there's the other side of the horseshoe where the far right and the far left get kind of close to each other. And some people sometimes jump over, right? Because there's they're so far on the left that they are that they get a and I think RFK is just like the prime example of this. Like he wasn't like a moderate Democrat. He was a he was a very progressive Democrat who's kind of gotten right. on board. And and I, I think it was, you know, my theory is like you get oh all these institutions are bad. It's Occupy Wall Street. It's the government. It's you know the left the conspiratorial thinking. And you can then kind of see how it's easy then to be like oh big farm is bad. Oh the vaccines are bad. And now all of a sudden I'm a Trumpist. Right. Right now we can't trust right. anybody, right? I don't, right. I don't know. But anyway, I mean, that's an outsider's view of that. What's, what's your take on it? You know, I don't. I, I know. I obviously I know of the theory. I don't. Yeah. We need a better theory. I don't know exactly how to describe this coming together. But you know, I also mea culpa. I hired, not hired, but you know, contracted with Glenn Greenwald at Salon. Another example of this. Another example. Um, I do think it's kind of, you know, it's definitely you're conspiracy minded. You know, I mean, Glenn was right about a lot of stuff. We, we were doing sure. we were doing some torture, you know, R.I.P. Yeah. Diane Feinstein. You were definitely to my right. But you that's you, you shown in the moment when you released that report on on torture. We tortured. Um, Glenn was writing about it. Glenn was writing about it. And I, I, I don't know. I mean, he left Salon. He, you know, took in Snowden. Uh, it, but I think there is an element of you're a conspiracy theorist, you're right about some things, you get some things right, but then you see it everywhere. I mean, I know with Glenn, and we had some fights about this, Barack Obama was a centrist to me. You know, he really was. I Sorry, sorry, folks out there, but as a Democrat, he really was a centrist. He happened to be black, so he fooled people. I'm not saying fooled people as in he did anything wrong, but... He was a centrist. He was he was to the right. You know, he governed to the right of where Joe Biden is today. Let's don't you think for so? Sure. For, for sure. For sure. Economic stuff for sure. For sure. Um, um, and I and think it, even you know, on foreign policy, I would say probably, probably on also. foreign policy. Yeah. He brought the, he got got us out of Afghanistan. He warned Obama against escalating. You know, the troop numbers when Obama mm -hmm. did that. Um, he Drone was the first strikes. one to come out for gay marriage. He forced Obama. Yeah out on on True. gay marriage um i don't love everything about uncle joe although i do love uncle joe uh, but you know glenn to get back to obama yeah. glenn saw similar things happening under obama drones there was still a lot of drone warfare yeah. there wasn't i'm not saying there was torture but there were you know there were some sketchy things foreign policy other things and i think you know once you see it you can't unsee it and there's a certain kind of integrity in saying Bush did it, but now Obama's doing a lot of the same stuff. But then, I don't know, then you just go off the cliff or you, the horseshoe comes around and you just are either imagining the worst or seeing the worst or believing the worst. And that's that's where he went. Um, you know, we've got the same thing, you know, in terms of Russia, where, you know, it became, you know, obviously it's a staple of Trumpism. The Russia hoax was a hoax. Russia did nothing wrong, you know, Putin is a great man. But then there became, you know, people, there's the horseshoe theory, then there's also the tankies on the left who support Putin. You know, right. Putin did nothing wrong. People like me who believe that Russia did interfere in our elections in some fashion, Russia hoax, MSNBC, you know, shit libs. Um, they they all went and then you know the war happens in ukraine and suddenly they you, you know the ukrainians are the aggressors and nato provoked it, the us provoked that poor russia had no choice but to take crimea because you know nato was aiming you know its weapons at russia you know it's I just think some of that is ideological 
Um, you know, I, no, while we're doing no offense, no offense, there were always some pro-Russia leftists out there. That's not exactly a new thing. That was true right. in the 80s and, uh, and has been true for a while. Now we've got a, more, I think, pro-Russia righties. So, you know, right. uh, it's a, <laughs> Mona Charon, my colleague, has been saying that she's got to update useful idiots to make it about the right this time. She made it about the pro, it was about the pro-Russia right. lefties in the 80s. Um, but anyway, uh, I, digress, I digress now. Um, but I think some of it is also about resentment. And that's my that's the common line I think between Kennedy and Greenwald. I don't know Talbot, but the people we've been talking about is they are resentful that like the whatever you want to call it, center left corporate libs or whatever whatever word you whatever pejorative or compliment you want to use, neoliberal they 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 neoliberal, resent, yeah. right, that this crowd, you know, is at the state dinners and on television and getting the contracts and that they feel like uh, like a personal desire to want to take them down and and resentment can lead you to some bad places right and i think that what you're saying is right is like if you are correct that that group missed some things they they missed some things going along with the iraq war they missed whatever right they missed some things with the great recession but like once you're convinced that those people are bad right. and that everything that they do is bad they're not just and, wrong or bad right yeah that then right then that incentivizes so i think that there's like that personal resentment contrarianism is a big part of it yeah, I would agree. Although, I, you know, again, I have to say, Bobby could retire and, you know, live out his life with his dogs and his wife and his falcons and everything else. He's really, you know, apart from losing his dad, which is terrible, he, Bobby's done well. Glenn's mm -hmm. done really well. Glenn got, Glenn got a lot of money, you know, to start the intercept, to lead the intercept. God knows what else he's got. And Glenn you know, Glenn's doing well. There's no substitute for recognition, though, for being seen. Yeah. You know, Kennedy's, like his family, you know, they've got statues and sculptures. There's no, sub right. there's no amount of money that's a substitute for that, you know? That's true. And, th and yeah, that's true. Anyway, my last thing on, on RFK, do you think, I think the conventional wisdom, Nate Silver weirdly wrote in Barry Weiss's thing today that that, that he's because he always has to be counter conventional wisdom now. So the key wrote, the counter conventional yeah. wisdom is that, is that Kennedy will help Trump and I was like, or Kennedy will help Biden, rather. And Kennedy would hurt Trump if he ran as a third party. Uh, oh, right. Candidate. It's a counter, that, counter, counter, counter. Yeah, yeah, but I was like, I think that I thought that was the conventional wisdom. That's what I right. think. Um, but anyway, I, I'm of the view that Kennedy would hurt Trump, actually, actually and help Biden. Because I think because of this that we're talking about at this point, to be mostly kind of like MAGA types that would go for Kennedy. But maybe that's wrong. I don't know. This is there in your, And so I'm curious what you, what you think about that. Maybe there are enough lefty Jill Stein... Bernie Sanders types that would vote for him that it would actually hurt Biden. Right. I'm open to that. You know, I know I didn't support Bernie either time, but I would never put his name in, on that list. He, you know. Sure, I wasn't comparing. I just meant like. No, I don't need to yeah. damn you. I yeah. just, you know, yeah. I, I'm yeah. always in trouble for not supporting Bernie in my in my world. Um, I don't know. I think Such it a is different world. I know our worlds. I think it's really interesting that Steve Bannon now thinks now he's now cursing out Bobby. He encouraged Bobby to run, yes. but he's now cursing out Bobby because he thinks that Bobby, if he runs an independent campaign, will hurt Trump. This is a kind um, of I, I really don't know, but I think there's a decent there's a decent argument to be made that he that he would hurt Trump. That you know his family is going to go all out for Joe Biden. You know everybody that I know. I mean Caroline. Kennedy Schlossberg, she doesn't do a lot of interviews, but she did a really great interview. I think it was with Gail King and her upstart son. And her son had gone on TikTok yeah, and been like, you know, Uncle Bobby, you know, go away. You're crazy. And she was asked. He's like, the kind of Kennedy we like. He's a handsome yeah, he's airhead a, who's doing the right thing. I, you, yeah, you do I, your thing, Jack. Do your thing, young Jack. Um, You know, I, so and and. Caroline was just really obviously amused. Um, any anybody you know anybody like my late parents or my aunts and uncles who loved who revere the Kennedys who's still a Democrat that's another conversation. Uh, no, they will not vote for Bobby when this by the, when this gets going. Um, and I do think that the we do we have some crunchy liberals. I mean, we covered it at Salon. We had you know anti-vax parents in Marin County who were you know obviously you know voted for at that back at the time Kerry or Obama, um, who weren't getting their kids vaxxed. You know, it was crazy. Right, yeah. So there is there's definitely the the goop you know goop Democrats. Or, right. You know. Um, they are out there, but I think the Syria, the people who've just really like made anti-vax stuff 
a political movement, not just like a lifestyle choice or right. They're they're on the right. Um, they're also dying. You know, it's really sad when you look at the red state COVID deaths. Um, you know, but anyway, I, I I can't tell you for sure. But I my, my, my I go back and forth on this yeah. one. I, I think I could see it either way. 